So this video is a worked example using the factor theorem and the conjugate root theorem as well. It's a part A, B, C, so let's kick off with part A and see how we go. Uh, it says show that Z minus 1 plus 2i is a factor. So students get really confused with things like this where there's a complex number in the factor. So Let's go back to factors that don't have complex numbers in them. Say z minus 3 is a factor. If z minus 3 is a factor, that means that uh, z equals 3 is a solution when pz equals 0. So the reason I'm doing this is because you need to be really careful when this is a factor. Rewrite it as z minus bracket 1 minus 2i. It shouldn't be hard to see that this is equal to this, right? Minus 1 minus minus 2i plus 2i. So rewriting it like this tells us that therefore z, a solution, will be this part here, 1 minus 2i. So that means that using our factor theorem, P, the solution that we've just come up with, 1 minus 2i, must be equal to 0. That's what the factor theorem tells us. So 0 equals all of that with 1 minus 2 subbed in for z. So I've subbed it in, and now I need to expand everything to show that this side does in fact equal 0. That's going to be a little bit of work. If you know your binomial expansion rules, however, it shouldn't be too difficult. All right, so let's go through it. It's this term cubed, so 1 cubed is 1. It's this term cubed, so negative 2i cubed. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. i cubed is negative i, so negative 8 times negative i is positive. Let's put it over here, positive 8 i. Alright, so there are bookends, cubed and cubed. The next one is 3 times the first term squared, 3 times 1 squared, which is 1, times this negative 2i. So that leads us to negative 6i. And then our last term is positive 3 times this bit here, which is just the number 1, times this bit squared. So negative 2 squared is 4, i squared is negative 1, so times negative 4. So we have 3 times 1 times negative 4, which is negative 12. Simplifying that, we get 1 minus 12, which is minus 11, and negative 6i plus 8i, which is positive 2i. And now we're going again, minus, minus, and then we're going to do 1 minus 2i squared. Alright, so this is a perfect square. 1 squared is 1. Negative 2i squared. i squared is negative 1. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. So we're going to get a negative 4 on this end of things. And then if we need to do this, we do this times this times 2. So negative 2i times 1 is negative 2i times 2 is negative 4i. 1 minus 4 is negative 3, negative 3, negative 3 minus 4i, but we're subtracting all of it, so it's going to be positive 3 and positive 4i. Nearly done. We have 3 times 1, which is 3. We have 3 times negative 2i, which is negative 6i, and we have that 5 right there. Now, hopefully, when I look at all of my real components, negative 11 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5, we get 0. And when I look at my imaginary components, 2i plus 4i minus 6i, I get 0i. Zero. 0 plus 0i zero is 0. 0. What have I just done? I've shown that z minus 1 plus 2i is a factor because 1 minus 2i is a solution. I have done part A. Finished. So let's move forward to part B. And part B tells us to fully factorize. And here's where we get to use our conjugate root theorem. So earlier, we decided that because z minus 1 plus 2i was a factor, 
and you know that I would prefer to write that as z minus 1 minus 2i, because that is a factor, that is a solution. And because all of the coefficients are 1, negative 1, 3, and 5, because all the coefficients are real, that means that if there is one complex solution, there is always another complex solution, and that complex solution is the conjugate of that one. So if z minus 1 minus 2i is a factor, that means there is another factor, z minus 1 plus 2i. So I know that pz has two factors, this one and this one. Conjugate root theorem. So now I get to write the following. Pz is equal to, it's equal to that, right? Z cubed minus Z squared plus 3Z plus 5. But it's also equal to this factor, Z minus 1 minus 2i. Also this factor, z minus 1 plus 2i, right? But I'm not finished, right? This is a linear factor. This is a linear factor. If I multiply those factors together, what I'm going to get is not a cubic. I'm going to get a quadratic. So I need another factor. Now, here's a cool piece to this puzzle. This factor here must be linear, because these come together to make a quadratic, and I'm aiming for a cubic. But it must also be real. Why does it have to be real? I've only got one factor left. And if it was complex, it means it would need to have a conjugate pair to go with it. I've only got one factor left, so this factor must be real. So I get to deduce that this one is az plus b, where a and b are real numbers. So what I'm going to do from here is expand everything that I've got going on here, this times this, this times this, this times this, and then I'm going to equate these coefficients with the coefficients that come from expanding this. Now these brackets have kind of served their purpose now, so I'm comfortable getting rid of those now. When I do that though, that becomes a plus. And when I do that here, this becomes a minus. Okay. Uh, and now I'm going to expand all of these brackets, just using like FOIL expansion. You don't need to watch me do that. So I've done the full expansion of this and this, which gives me nine terms. And obviously I can simplify those nine terms. I haven't done the expansion here yet, so I'm just going to simplify those terms. It's worth noting that whenever you do this, you're going to end up with like ones that cancel each other out. Negative 2zi, positive 2zi, positive 2i, negative 2i. That's got something to do with the, with the pattern here. All right, so I have z squared minus 2z plus 5, and I've still got that az plus b on the end. Okay, uh, you maybe don't have to expand this next part, you can kind of do it in your head a little bit, but I am going to expand this next part so I can really illustrate what's going on. All right, I've expanded it here. Now I'm going to group my like terms. I get an az cubed there. Now I do have a couple of like terms here, and they can be a little bit tricky to expand, uh, but we've got a z squared there. And we've got a plus b and a negative 2a. Okay, so b minus 2az squared. And we've got a, con a um, linear term here, a z. So plus negative 2b plus 5a there. And finally, we have this term here, which is a constant 5b. Okay. And this is where we look at our coefficients and we equate our coefficients. Because remember, we said that this is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this. And what we have here is a cubic 
in z cubed, z squared, z and a constant. And here we have a cubic z cubed, z squared, z and a constant. And now we equate our coefficients. This coefficient is the number 1. This coefficient is the number 1. Therefore, a equals 1. Look, this coefficient, this constant, is 5. This is 5b. This is the only constant term we have. 5b. Therefore, b equals 5 divided by 5, which is 1. A little bit of a coincidence here. a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1. Not always the case. I wish I'd chosen a different example, but we're here now. So, if a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 1, then this factor here, this az plus b factor, we now know what it is. It's 1z plus 1, or just z plus 1. So we started this whole journey with this question, fully factorise. And what we did was know that this was a factor. We used the conjugate root theorem to figure out that this was also a factor. And now, through this process of equating of expanding and then equating coefficients, we've been able to figure out that the last factor is z plus 1. So, therefore, this fully factorised is that times that times z plus 1. That is our solution. So, that is our solution. That's what we worked so hard for. And that brings us to our last question, which is solve when pz equals zero. So once you factorize something, solving it is really, really simple. It's just the null factor law here. So we know that to solve this, this must be equal to zero. This must be equal to zero or this must be equal to zero. So zero equals z minus one plus two i or zero equals z um, minus one minus two i, or zero equals z plus one. So our three solutions here, um, z equals positive one minus two i, or z equals positive one plus two i, Conjugate root theorem, there it is, or z equals negative 1. We've got three solutions there. All right, a little bit to take in there, but that is um, factorizing a cubic using the factor theorem, the conjugate root theorem, and then um, equating our coefficients.